Hi there, today I want to give you some tips and tricks for pairing the Canon M50 with the Zoom H1N audio recorder. That's what I use. I make a bunch of English and Esperanto short films, and so far so good. I've really enjoyed it. But there have been a few hiccups along the way and some lessons learned. Let me share those with you so you don't make the same mistakes and get frustrated at this equipment. It works great when it works great, and let's help you make it work great as much as possible. Here's my audition room studio uh, setup. It is a Canon M50 with a Zoom H1N on top of it. Here's what the audio sounds like when I just use the built-in auto internal microphones of the camera. Not super great. And now, here's what the audio sounds like when I use a Zoom H1N feeding directly into the M50. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Okay. Well, that's great, but the problem is the Zoom has its own battery supply and those batteries can run out and die whenever they feel like it. And you have to know when that happens. And it's difficult to check because the view screen on the M50 doesn't tell you while you're recording whether it's getting anything. It doesn't tell you if you're too loud, too quiet, on at all. It doesn't tell you that. It does if you use the separate Canon Connect app and you're monitoring that on your phone. For some reason, they thought enough to do that on your phone, but not to let you see that here. So I have no way of knowing whether the microphone is working normally because the Canon M50 does not have a headphone jack. It has a mic input, so you can put a good mic in for good mic audio coming in, but it won't show me what I'm hearing. So here's what I did. I put a little audio splitter right here. I put a little audio splitter into the Zoom H1N. So now the red cable goes directly into the camera and this white cable is actually just a pair of headphones. So I can hear. Yep, I'm recording. Cool. And I would know the moment the battery dies, I'll know about it because uh, that's the only way. Because there's no uh, LED on the side of this device. And for this to be tall enough to be looking at me, this has to be even up higher so I can't see without uh, dipping it down like I'm dancing with it. Okay, yeah, the screen is still on so the mic hasn't stopped recording. That's not practical. Uh, to either do this or to go into a menu after every take, between every take, I have to like live in paranoia that like, ooh, how, how's the battery holding up? That's no fun. So this really solves a myriad of problems. Uh, I can just have my camera guy monitoring with his ears while recording with his eyes and seeing what he's seeing and hearing what he's hearing. And I already checked, there's no difference in audio quality. It doesn't go down in quality when you split it off like this. It's just giving a copy, a facsimile of the audio. So this really solves a lot of issues. The last short film I did, uh, Demetu Le Blue Zone, AKA Take It Off. All of the footage that I have of Lori, the one who's stirring the, uh, the pasta sauce, all of that footage ended up being silent because I didn't have any extra AAA batteries. In case this ran out on mine, ah, oh boy, I don't want to have to run to the store. I know, we finished Mandy's coverage, so I just went over and turned it off as we were setting the lights up for Lori's coverage. And I forgot to mention that or to check it myself to turn it back on. So then Julian, my camera guy, he picked it up and just, all right, we're ready, let's go. And he recorded and we did it all in one long take and then cool. And now let's, let's film an interview with the actors. I didn't check. And when I got home, I found out that all the footage from this angle was silent. Now, fortunately, I use protection when I make films. And that protection in this case was a second Zoom H1N. I use a Bluetooth speaker case to house this because the cases that are built for these recorders are often like really small and you have to take off all of the accessories like a windscreen. You, you can't store it with the windscreen on, which is lame because I only use it with a windscreen on. So I like the fact that this can just be in here. Uh, all, wait, it looks like Beaker from the Muppets at the moment with all this hair. Uh, but this thing was mounted right above, uh, mounted off a kitchen cabinet, uh, pointing down at the actor. So I was able to use this audio with this uh, video and I was able to make do, which was really great. It, I didn't want to have to do it all just from one angle here. I needed that audio. so. Fortunately, I had this uh, because it could record separately. A lot of microphones you can buy for cheaper than one of these, but it has to be tethered directly into the camera because it doesn't have a way to record it itself. It just sends good audio to a camera. 
This can do both. This has a little micro SD card slot, and so I can record and then later put those audio files into my editing program. But that also is a cause for another problem. We had a little birthday surprise for my friend Deanna back in March, and we did a surprise dance party on the mountain over at Arabia Mountain. We kidnapped her at 1201. As soon as she, you know, had her, her birthday began, we burst into her room and kidnapped her and said, all right, come on, let's go, 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 go. And we, you know, like blindfolded her and stuck her in one of our cars and we drove her and I'm recording like, all right, what do you think's going on here? You know, you know what are you doing? You know, we're having some fun. When we got out of the car at the final place, somehow in the hustle and bustle, I accidentally hit the play button. And instead of recording and listening to what was happening and, you know, all right, uh, three, two, one. Surprise! What? what? What are you guys doing here? Whoa, it's my birthday! Yay, let's dance on a mountaintop! I got none of that because it was playing audio that it had recorded during a short film a few weeks earlier. So what I'm hearing as I'm watching this footage is, all right, uh, scene three, take two, um, begin. All right, uh, so it, what in the world? I was so frustrated that, like, really? And I had no way to know that instead of playing, you know, instead of giving me what I needed, it was giving me something else because I had no way to monitor that. So if I had had this splitter at the time, I would have heard, wait, take three, scene two, whoa, wait, and I would have caught it and gone, nope, don't think so, and I would have fixed it. So you can either have your thing die or start playing the wrong audio instead of listening if you don't use this setup. So get an audio splitter, they're like eight bucks, uh, get that and then use this. Now you can also use the hold button uh, when you turn it on, you can use that and put it in the other direction and it makes it so that these buttons won't do anything by accident in a situation like that, but I wasn't thinking about that either. Uh, so use the whole thing as well, but just get one of these. I'm giving you all the horror stories of what can go wrong, but this is also a great device uh, that I highly recommend getting. Get it for like a hundred bucks. It's great. For my Esperanto audiobooks, this is what I use. Uh, I have a a bigger, fancier condenser microphone I could use, but I don't want to have to worry about what program I'm recording and is the program set up right? Uh, and how is it going to export the thing afterwards? And I've done collaborative projects with other Esperantists around the world, and it's always a bit of a risk with, all right, what, what kind of audio? Okay, you have a Blue Yeti, but how are you recording with that Blue? What are you recording with? And how, what are the settings? When you, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So with this, uh, as long as there's battery power, and you can also just plug in a USB cable to power it. That's This one right now just has a USB uh, running into a power bank. So this thing's not gonna die. I, we can leave it on overnight and it'll still be running, which is great. Uh, so as long as it's on, it does great audio recording and you can check your levels right there. And uh, the files types that it gives you just pop this out and send me these exact files and I know that I'll have good audio. So I prefer that the Esperantists I work with in other places in the world, just use one of these. It really is simpler and easier, especially if you're not super tech literate, then just use this, point it at you and then speak some good audio and I'll get it and be able to edit it to my heart's content. So I highly recommend it, but just get a splitter and uh, be smart uh, with your recording and, and check your footage before you leave. That's also a very good lesson. So that's all. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.